Welcome to this video on carbon dioxide which is suitable for use with the IGCSE chemistry specification. In this video we're going to look at how to prepare carbon dioxide using calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid in the laboratory. We're going to look at how to form carbon dioxide using metal carbonates um, without using hydrochloric acid and we're then going to look at the properties of carbon dioxide principally its solubility in water and its density and look at how these two properties relate to its uses and hopefully then we'll move on to looking at how carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas. So let's get started. These are two diagrams which I've uh, pilfered off the internet um, for this video and they both make use of the same reaction but they both look slightly different. Um, both have a flask, um, in this case a round bottom flask, which has marble chips in the bottom and dilute hydrochloric acid. I uh, apologise for the ringing you can hear in the background, I think that's my brother calling me. Um, but I'll carry on anyway. So we've got marble chips and hydrochloric acid. Now the chemical within marble which is reacting is a compound called calcium carbonate and that's a solid. Um, the formula of hydrochloric acid is HCl and it's not pure hydrogen chloride, it's hydrogen chloride which has been dissolved in water and that reacts to form a salt, calcium chloride which is soluble in water it also forms water itself and it forms carbon dioxide extremely important if we're looking to prepare some carbon dioxide for the laboratory. Now these, this equation isn't balanced. Uh, you can see that we've got two Cl's over here and two H's, uh, whereas actually we've only got one Cl and one H there. So if we stick a two here, that should balance it. And this preparation would work for pretty much any carbonate I can think of. So you could put zinc carbonate with any acid and it would give you the salt water and it would give you carbon dioxide. So copper carbonate plus hydrochloric acid would give copper chloride, water and CO2. Um, so it doesn't matter too much which one you've chosen um, but according to the specification you need to know about calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. So you put the solid with the acid and you get bubbles of carbon dioxide which come up through the delivery tube in both these setups. Now both setups are equally valid for preparing carbon dioxide. The first one makes use of carbon dioxide being a dense gas. It makes use of it being denser than air because as the carbon dioxide is bubbled into the jar here, this is called a gas jar, um, it will push the air outwards because the carbon dioxide is denser than the air so it sinks to the bottom and so this method of collecting the gas is called the upward displacement of air. The second setup we've got here is one which possibly is more familiar to you where you bubble the gas through water into um, an upturned tube, maybe it's a gas jar maybe it's a boiling tube, maybe it's a measuring cylinder uh, and previously it was full of water and you bubble the gas in and that pushes the water out. Now this is also valid uh, you can see here we're collecting gas but is, is hampered a little bit because the carbon dioxide does dissolve in the water a little bit um, so you don't collect quite as much gas in here as you need to. However, the advantage that this method has over the method on the left is that at least we know that this gas which we've collected up here is all carbon dioxide in theory. Provided you've allowed the air which was initially in here to escape, the gas up here should all be carbon dioxide because previously it was water and you've pushed that all out. Whereas here, you don't quite know if you've got pure CO2 in here. Uh, because originally there was air and we've not really, um, we, it's not quite as efficient at 
displacing it. Uh, that's the water displacement method. So there are pros and cons to each method. You both you need to be aware of both methods and why each method is valid. Now another way of producing uh, carbon dioxide is by thermally decomposing a metal carbonate. And I've pinched this diagram off the Royal Society of Chemistry's website, so thank you very much to them. Um, and metal carbonates, if you heat them very strongly, break down. They thermally decompose. Um, so one that you might have seen is copper carbonate. Um, and copper carbonate is a lovely green solid. And if you heat copper carbonate really strongly, it breaks down, it thermally decomposes to form copper oxide and CO2, which is a gas. Uh, and you see a wonderful colour change happening in there because the copper carbonate is green, but it produces copper oxide, which is a black powder. And out comes the carbon dioxide and bubbles you might, you might be collecting the carbon dioxide, but in this diagram, they've actually got a test tube of lime water underneath. And so you can use this setup as an extremely good test for carbon dioxide because the lime water forms, a, the, well, what, a white precipitate forms within the lime water. People often say the lime water goes cloudy, um, but I prefer to say a white precipitate forms. And if you carry on bubbling the CO2 in, eventually the white precipitate redissolves. So eventually the cloudy colour is lost. And you might have seen that when uh, you, you might have blown um, through a straw into a test tube of lime water and you'll see the white precipitate forming, you'll see it going cloudy, and eventually that cloudiness is lost, and that's because the white precipitate uh, has re-dissolved. Um, now other carbonates will do this, this reaction. Calcium carbonate will, and we use calcium carbonate uh, later on in the course in the blast furnace when we're extracting iron from its ore. And calcium carbonate will do pretty much the same. Um, it will form calcium oxide, which is a solid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. Uh, this is less exciting, if I'm honest, because calcium carbonate is a lovely white solid. Uh, and calcium oxide is also a white solid, so you don't see as good a colour change uh, as in the other reaction. Um, but nonetheless, it's still valid. Um, they might throw at you a, a carbonate you've never seen before. Uh, zinc carbonate, for example, uh, and that would do just the same thing. So it's important you know that these are thermal decomposition reactions. It's a decomposition because the substance has broken down and it's a thermal decomposition because it's broken down under the action of heat.